Hey everybody, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the crew on the forums. This is 3dbuzz.com. We're doing a, a series of video trainings on how to help you draw. Starting out very, very basic. Last video we went over on different techniques and how to get hand-eye coordination all in order so you can draw what you see. And again, uh, right now in this video we're going to talk about form, more lines, we're going to talk about cross-hatching, and uh, how to create volume using lines. I'm also going to show you a couple tricks in Photoshop. Now this is not a Photoshop class by any means, but I'll show you some tricks and tips that I use in my everyday life as a, as a concept artist, comic book guy, and illustrator. So right now what we're going to talk about is hatch marks. Uh, hatch marks uh, is a way to create volume by using line weights. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to take my brush and I'll get a darker black here. I'm going to hit OK. Hit B for brush. I'll do a test right here. I need to turn my opacity up. That's why it's always nice to check your screen. Let's do that. My opacity is at 100. My image size is 20 by 20, 300 dpi. It's the resolution so I can grab more paper to put more detail on. I'll tell you what, when we talk about cross-hatching, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to draw by using simple shapes, kind of a human arm. I'm going to start out here, kind of a circle for a deltoid, my little guidelines through here, my fist area, put my bicep through here, tricep, come back up here. And it's only erasing this part because, dun 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 dun, if you look, I'm on a different layer. So if I mess up, I don't mess up my bottom layer and have to create that all over again. Hit B for my brush again. See that out. Okay, so we have a half-hearted human arm. Deltoid. Deltoid is broken down into three heads. You have the inner, or the outside, the inner, and inside. Bicep, tricep, brachial muscles through here. Now this is not an anatomy course by any means. That will be coming later. What I want to kind of do is start creating volume using cross-hatchings. And what is cross-hatching? Let me really zoom in here for you. Cross-hatching is a series of lines we're going to build up like this. Henceforth the name cross-hatching. Let's look at our brush. I want to get a solid brush, not one that fades. And I'm going to come in here, bring my brush size down quite a bit, all the way down to a 9. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here by pulling these lines up like that. If you notice, it starts out high, goes to low, almost like a moon, like a circle. And that's great because I'm starting to create that illusion of, of volume. So my brush size is the 9. I'm going to bring it all the way down to a 4. Really zoom in here like this. And from here, I'm working the bottom up like this, the bottom up like that, the bottom. And as I go up, the lines get thinner. So now I pull back, starting to create that illusion of volume using strictly lines. So let's bring our brush size back up to a 10, and let's go ahead and, I guess, flesh this baby out. Nice long line. Do a little bit for the tricep area. Bicep. I'm going to come down here like this. We have our brachial muscles through here. Let's do another one over here like this. And then I will bring my brush size back down to, let's say, a 7. Seven's is good. Really get in here close, nice and neat. And working the cross hatch. Zooming in here for you guys. Nice, long, bold lines. And this is something you guys and gals are going to have to work on. It is your control of your pen, whether you're using standard paper, Bristol board, or using your Wacom tablet. We'll put some cross hatchings through here. And squirt them. So now that I pull back like this, it's starting to create volume in our, in our muscle man here. So that's cross-hatching, and it's a very useful tool. 
Uh, the other thing I want to do right now is still working on your hand-eye coordination. As you can see, I have some boxes up through here. And what I want to do is, now it's going to be one continuous line. As I come up here, I'm going to stay inside the confines of this box. I'm not going to come out here like this by any means. I'm going to bring my brush size back up to a 25. I'm going to come up right here, and it's like you're kissing the edge. Kissing it. Coming down here. Coming down here. This corner. Coming up like this. Now watch, if I hit Control Z, the whole thing disappears. That's because I did not lift my pencil off my tablet once. And this is a very good exercise, again, for controlling your lines. Uh, that's what drawings are, is lines. So what we're going to do here is let's try it again. Start up here in the corner, 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 another corner, and up like that. Now here's a good way to kind of cheat. Uh, I don't want to say cheat. Help yourself out. Make little landmarks here, 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 and here. And I'll start right up by this landmark, head towards this one. Come down here, head towards that. Here, to here. Let's do our little landmarks down here again. So we start here, here, and this one we won't use any landmarks. We come back up and try to kiss the corner of the edge. Coming down here like this. And there you go. The reason I do this, for instance, my females as I draw my American Fusion. If I was to come in here to make an eye, I make a solid line like this. I come in here and I start adding line weight variation to it. So it's going thin to thick where the eyelashes will be. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we'll put a couple in through here. Like that. I'll bring my brush size down a little bit, down to a 10. Start making my eyeball like this. The fold of my skin goes in here to the back of the eye. Bring my brush size up quite a bit to a 25 to start the eyebrow. Make it nice and thick through here. Kind of an arch like this. And I come in here for the pupil. Bring my brush size down quite a bit. And just like the lines we learned over here, I'm taking one, two, like this like that. And what we can do here is use our eraser tool this is a quick tip for you to make an iris. Or we can come up here to pick our eraser tool. I like the soft tool for our brush for this. Bring it in like that. Go back to B for brush. We'll go ahead and circle this around here like so. And again, using the method that we've already used up here with the hatch marks and stuff, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start here. Actually, let's Z this out. Let's make our lines a little bit thinner. So I'll bring my brush size down to a 7. And here we go. So now when I zoom back, it gives that illusion that there's a shadow over the eye right there. So that said, working on cross hatching, we're working with pure line uh, without picking our pin up at all. And this is kind of a useful tip uh, to work with that. And you see my ship down here. It's a nice ship, it's not a brilliant ship, but it's a good ship. And uh, what we'll do is we'll create another layer down here, like so. And we'll say ship lines. And I already have the base model, and you can tell I did some kind of cross-hatching for gradation and all that sort of stuff like that. But let's really come in here and concentrate, let's just say, on this crow's nest right here. What I'm going to do is I look at my brush size and give it a test. It's about the good line weight, and I'm going to actually just trace around here like that so I get a nice bold outline. So, 
you notice I'm going through this a couple times again looking for line weight variation we don't want one single continuous line weight otherwise it gets very boring to the readers I'll actually pump up my brush quite a bit up through here like this and another one over through here and what we're going to do is I'll bring my line weight brush down quite a bit to a 6 I'm hitting my canvas, hitting shift and then I'm making my little triangle like this hitting my canvas, hitting shift following that around, hitting my canvas, hitting shift bring that around like that so now that I take my background off here we have a very sloppy albeit uh, crow's nest and what we're going to do is we're going to make it look nice and happy happy little trees all that sort of fun stuff by using our lines that we just learned about cross hatching I'll bring my brush size down all the way to a 4 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this area blank right through here and I'm going to follow this down my imaginary line of the shadow it's coming through here, all this volume through here to here. So I'm going to work from one corner like this all the way through here. And then I'll put another thicker line through here to give sort of dimension to it. Dimension to it like this. And for giggles, we'll do it over here like that. And so we have really tight lines up here. Let's go ahead and make these tighter by using a cross hatch uh, technique. We'll bring it in here like this. And it's really starting to get volume on it. That's what we definitely want to create. Let's go ahead and put some cross hatchings over through here, but not quite as thick maybe some down here. And let's actually bring our line weight down. So I have it at 2 right now. And then working our cross hatching. Bring it back up through here, turn my layer back on. And let's do this. Just go ahead and select the area that it's on. Take this all out with an eraser tool, haphazardly. Turn this back on here. I know I scoop back like this. It's starting to look more illustrative type look by using hatch marks like that. So the important thing is you, you need to learn a very, very styles. You need to not be pigeonholed in, into one thing. If you're a manga artist and that's all you do is manga, hey, great. If you can make a living at it, that's what you choose to do, that's, that's fine, but you'll only be known as a manga artist. If you only do uh, photorealism, you're going to be known as a photorealism type artist. That's not bad, but you need many, many hats in this industry to make it. So it's my job to teach you guys the importance of all these other techniques. Let's come zoom in here real quick where we're at it, the, the head of the ship. Hit my B button for my brush. Let's bring this all the way up to an 8. And let's really work this area right through here. Let me come back up to my ship lines. That's the layer I want. So I'm going to come in through here. And actually we'll bring down the line weight to a 4. Coming in through here like this. Some cross hatching. This is a good exercise, again, if you're on the phone, you're at school, as long as you don't get in trouble. It's a really nice read. And a good exercise to get your hand-eye coordination going on. Making a thicker line weight through here as this crustacean topples over the, the bow.
and let's start to bring our brush down all the way to a 2. And we'll kind of do that gradation out through here. So the darkest dark area is over here. You can do some more cross hatching if you want. Bring it out through here. So when we pull back, it starts to melt, it starts to mold. It's, you can really see this is the darkest area and the shadow starts to fold over by using that simple technique. It's one I really like to use. It again really depends on uh, what job you're doing or what you're, you're trying to do for the illustrative look. Uh, another thing I want to show you guys, speaking about gradation, leads me up to here. Let's come back up to here, this eye, or this, this football looking shape. And at this point here, we're going to call it 50%. Bring my brush size up a little bit. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. If you have paper and a stump, it's really nice and easy to blend things. So I'm going to teach you a Photoshop technique that I used. And I'm going to select this brush right here, a soft brush. I'll bring my brush size up to 35, and I'm going to come here. So this area is going to be dark. When I get to 50%, it should be a 50% gray. So I'm going to do up here to my opacity. I'll also drop it down to 63. And now I'm going to drop it down to a 52. Now I'll drop it all the way down to, say, if, here's my 50. Yay, 50. Now I'm going to keep dropping down until I get my gradation that I want. Go to my 20s. Let's bring down to my teens. Let's bring all the way down to an 8. So we have this nifty, cool looking uh, gradation from dark to, to light. Now if you had a stump stick, you could mix it around. There's a couple different tools we can use that. But let me show you something I like. It's called a Gaussian Blur. What I'll do is I'm going to use my selection tool like this. Follow this all the way around here like so, because inside here is the only area that I want to affect. I come up to Filter. I come up to Blur. Gaussian Blur. And now, this is with nothing, all the way over here. As I push my radial blur more and more, you can tell here it's getting affected. Let's push it right here. And hit OK. Hit Control D to deselect. And that's a quick way to make things blend easy in Photoshop. So uh, we have some more work to do. I want us to talk more now about volume with some simple shapes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come over to this area right through here. I'm going to build some stuff using different squiggly lines. Uh, but first, let's talk about this. File New. I want 300 dpi. Let's go to Inches. I'll do 20 by 20. I'll hit OK. So now I have my new screen. I'm going to come here, create a new layer, and hit Base. And I'll actually come over here instead of a harsh black, I'm going to select a blue. Again, going back to my comic book roots for a non-photo blue. And hit B for brush and do a test. I need to turn my opacity up. Again, important to look at your screen. Make sure everything's set the way you want it set. And we can start. Let's come up here to image mode, RBG, flatten. So I flatten it, create yet another layer. Hit base, and let's try my blue. That's the blue that I'm looking for. All right, so here's, here's the deal. I'm going to talk about the direction of our strokes, too, and a stroke for each surface. Uh, the direction of the stroke, it's not only the intensity uh, and the width of the stroke that's important when it comes to drawing, but it's also the direction that you give the stroke. Basically, you know, in other words, the way the lines are drawn from the particular texture is how each object you know, interacts with these lines. Lines are also useful to express the object shading. Uh, and here, here we go. I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and start off with something simple. Let's do a, a three-dimensional triangle. I'm hitting my canvas, hitting shift, shift. If 
from this apex here, I'll bring it to here. So now I have a, a little triangle. Let's say our lighting source is here, light. And we're going in depth big time into light here in a little bit. But for this exercise here, if the light source is coming down here, this, this plane should be super, super light. We should have some overflow of some light hitting here, so it's not going to be nearly as dark. But this dark side, henceforth the name, is going to be dark. So what I'm going to do here is, moving with the surface, these lines aren't super tight. They're all moving the same direction. But again, using our line weight and what we've already learned, we're creating a volume to this. So if this is kind of where the light is bouncing off and being absorbed, this is our dark side. We really, really need to get in close. And these lines over here are going to be a lot closer. And again, this is a good exercise in starting and stopping. See how close you can get to the edge. Come in here, do a little bit more, little thicker lines. And boom. Simple ge geometric shape. Light source is here, a little bit of shadow here, and very dark over here. Let's do a comb, shall we? Again, I'm going to hit my canvas with my brush. I'm hitting shift right now. So I have a little cone looking object. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer here. I'm going to name it cone. C -O -N -E. I'm happy with the cone. I'm going to come here and get a different color, perhaps a red, reddish. And that's a, the, the basic shape. But I need this round. So I'm going to come follow this here. Actually, let me do this. The circumference in here, I made round. And then I'm going to take this corner here, up to here, down to this corner, hit my eraser tool because this is on the other side and we can't really see that. So now I come back to my base, hit my eraser tool, get rid of my baselines. Again, baselines are kind of like wireframes in, uh, in a 3DS Max or a Maya. So now we have our basic geometric cone. And what I really want to do is I want to show that it may be metal and I want it to be a glint right in this area through here. So come back up to my comb, hit B for brush, and what I'm going to do is notice how these lines go straight. These lines are actually going to be curved a little bit. And let me come in here really nice and close for you. Bring my brush size down, do a test. Control Z, let's bring it down even more to a 10. That should be adequate. And we'll do a couple of nice through here. And I'm going to stop right here. And what I'm doing is bringing them over slightly. And if you notice, they're all pretty much ending in this area right here. And that's what I want. So now I'm going to take these and curve them around like this. Notice they're not straight. They're following the contour of what we imagine this 2D object to be as a 3D object. And I can come in here with some cross hatching. Same thing over here. Kind of fill up some of this volume. And you can see this huge, uh, huge area right through here that uh, light would be reflecting off of. Let's zoom it back here like that. Now what we can do is actually come back and close a gap if you want, uh, so it's not so big. Ideally, you maybe want to glint about that area right through here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring my brush size up a little bit more. Building on top of everything we've already done. Some more 
cross sections. And that gives it a better look, like that. So we have our cone, we have our triangle. Let's go ahead and do the elusive cube. What I'm going to do here is, without perspective, because we're going to talk about perspective later, make a pretty shoddy cube. Bring this over here like this. And there's our cube. So where's our lighting source going to be at? Lighting source can be, say, again, let's, let's mess with it. Let's put it on top here. Lighting source is here. So actually, the bottom is going to be the darkest, and we're going to have to worry about overflow on each side. So what I want to do is it's going to be lighter up towards here as the light moves over. So I may start the base of my shadows down here like this. And then let's bring this lines over here so we make it aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Then we can do some cross hatching through here. And again, starting to build up volume using shadows and lights, uh, imaginary lights at this point, <clears throat> by using cross hatching. So there you have it, there you are on that. Uh, each surface has, I guess, it's its own animal. Uh, whenever I draw women's hair, say this is a part of a woman's face, got her eyeball right through here, part of her nose, her lip, put her ear like this. I mean, she kind of has a punk rock type of feel to her. Here. A lot of little gadgets in here that wires run out of. And you can also do this with hair. She had some hair coming down through here. We can do that to bring shadows to life in the background here. Eyeball on like this. Throw some shadows underneath her chin. And just by using these techniques, I mean, hair starting to take effect. It's, it's not a bad little trick to use. And the most important thing is, at the beginning of these videos, taking it very slow and very basic. And you can tell I'm making you hit hard on these lines. Circles. Doodly lines. I need your hand and your eye to work together. And that's the focus on this assignment right here, or exercise. What we're going to do is I have A equals vegetation. B is clouds. C is uh, added volume. D is for our roofs. E is for the shutters, F is for the shutters, you can tell the lines are moving different ways, and these squiggly lines right here is G for the trees. So I built a, a very simple, I guess, building using one point perspective. You can see my perspective line through here. And let's go ahead and work from top to bottom. Let's go ahead and do a B, and I want B are my clouds. I'm going to bring my brush size down quite a bit to make them look wispy. And my clouds just want you to have fun. Happy little clouds. Like so. So we have some clouds going on. Yay for the clouds! Let's talk about some vegetation. I like vegetation. Uh, so we're going to look at number C to add volume and A for vegetation. Uh, we'll do some trees up through here. So my vegetation is going to kind of look like this. And we'll bring our brush size up a little bit for this and put some trees on top. So I'm doing a straight line using hatch mark or our lines. Like this. And you notice I'm not really picking my pencil up off my Wacom tablet. Just watch when I do this, control Z, most of it's disappearing. 
So try to, again, just an exercise on how this is all going to be. This is going to help you out with gesture drawings later. Gesture drawings are very, very powerful to help you get a great read really quick on a subject. So we have some grass, like this is growing on top of a hill, and we have some trees that are going on like that, happy little trees. Let's talk about some volume, and let's really kind of pump up our brush size all the way to 16. I'm going to make these come out like slants. Let's follow it all the way down here like this. And again, let's pump it up a little bit more so we have something interesting, not one continuous line weight. So now we're creating volume. All right, from here, let's create more this way. Same volume, but kind of like where the bricks are going to be at. Let's bring this back and drop down our brush size a little bit. We'll drop it down to a 15. And going towards my imaginary line right through here, like we have some bricks. mortar or whatever you want to call it. And I'll bring my brush size down quite a bit all the way to five and inside here do a lot smaller lines. So already by using silly little tricks our, our, our brush is moving all around Working on an exercise and not picking it up off the Wacom tablet too much. We're starting to get kind of interesting looking picture. It's a sketch. It's nothing big. You're not going to win an award for it. Uh, but it's a good exercise in using all these strokes. So uh, let's actually add some more trees down here. Shall we? Yes, we shall. So I'm going to come through here. Let's do some curly cues like this. Maybe a little apple. Bring my brush size up a little bit more. And then, hey, look, we're making trees. Bring my brush size up to 25. This is a great exercise. Let me get quick. Grass. I'm going to grass line all the way across here like this. Put some grass on the side here too. Just quick little lines up and down, 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 up and down. So we have our clouds, we have some tree looking things up here. Let's talk about our shutters. We really want, let's go for a soft brush, shall we? Let's try it. We want a soft brush. Stay here and let's build our line weight up quite a bit. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit my canvas, hit shift. Actually, as we go further away, this line should be a little bit smaller. So let's bring our brush size down. Bring our brush size down a little bit more as we get closer to the horizon line here. So now we have some shutters. Bring our brush size down even more. Break some things up here. Brush size goes down as we move to our vanishing point. And now let's put some dirt on this little dirt road through here. And now we're going to build our, uh, get our brush nice and big. Let's make it a bit bigger. That's good. I'm going to bring my opacity down by quite a bit to 38. And I'm going to start building. Okay, so, so we have a dirt road. Let's make the shadow of the building fall across here. So this area here 
maybe a little bit darker. There's a window through here. Bring our opacity up quite a bit to 91. Let's bring our opacity down now to 40. And let's uh, work on our gradation. So we're going to start off with dark to light. So we're going to make this dark. We make it all one continuous line. And then we can come in here, make this area darker. Follow along the clouds. Bring your opacity down even more. Spring up to 25. This is a really quick building. Actually, let's do this. Let's bring our opacity all the way back up. Select a hard brush this time. Bring our brush size down to 15. And we'll make this look more like a window. But it's round. See, I'm following the contours. Went around here, up through here, like this. So, by using all these little guidelines for our, our vegetation, for our volume, for our trees, and using what we learned at the beginning of this video with this quick cross hatchings and understanding the volume and very, very basic lighting, I think you guys need a very good grasp right now, uh, and you can build from that. And any way we cut it, you need a good, solid foundation to draw. It's, it's like building a house. If I was to jump in here and just show you how to draw all manga stuff, chippies, uh, very cartoony things, that's great, but you're still not getting that fundamental foundation. A lot of young artists I talk to, they're like, I want to know how to draw like you. I want to draw hot chicks and dragons and guns. I'm like, that's great, but before you do that, let's learn the basics. You guys learn to master the basics, you can draw anything. You can go beyond my style. Pick your own style. That's the other thing we'll talk about later on is, what is your style? Do you want to emulate someone's style? That's not bad, but I hope you grow into your own style. So with that said, I appreciate you guys and gals listening to uh, this, this VTM lesson on volume. And I hope you get stellar hand control. And the more you draw, the better you're going to get. So with that said, I appreciate your time, and I look forward to the next video. Thank you very much.